Well, if I can find a few action from somewhere, then I'm going to love it. The backlash makes me horny. We're up for the banter. It's a comedian. Hello, welcome back to that Josh James show with me, stand-up comedian Josh James. As ever, I'm joined by my right-hand man, Chrissy White, a.k.a. White Boy, Rumpfer's number one podcaster. How we doing, matey? Good, mate. How are you? I'm very good. I was just complimenting you on your nice bald head earlier. Yeah, mate. Little fresh shave this morning. What do you think? Oh, it looks fantastic, man. Yeah, mate. I'm saying yeah. the secret, fresh razor. Fresh razor. Expensive fresh razor. I don't fuck about with them disposable Bix. You know what I mean? Nah. Five blade, Gillette, two head shaves, discard, Reno. Mm. Well, you heard it here first. If, you're, um, if you've got a bald head. If you're newly bald. Newly bald. Because there can be some teething problems when you first get a bald head. You know what I mean? For me, every three days, fresh shave, keep on top of it. Does that hurt your feelings when you're like, listen, I'm losing it. I can't really do like the Bobby Charlton no more, sweeping it over and doing all sorts of magic Mate, tricks. Telling you now, I was worried. Yeah. When my hair was falling out. You had a full on Bobby Charlton, I remember. You yeah, used yeah, to comb yeah. it over. Sweep. I used to call it the um the cinnamon swirl. <laughs> Used to come in from the left and swoop it over. Yeah. It's also called the trapdoor spider. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you get in the wind, it like flaps a little bit. Because I remember sometimes when it get windy, it would flap up. Wind was the enemy. Rain and wind. And you'd have a proper bald patch there. No, no, no. Here. Yeah. It was like I got the little island. Yeah, yeah. But it would like the bald patch would be there. I remember sometimes it, it would flap up thin. and I'd be like, rah. So I realised it wasn't it wasn't actually being bald. It was the balding. Mm. That used to give me anxiety. Yeah. As soon as I shaved it off, it was like a fucking relief, mate. It was like when I stopped taking drugs. It was like, oh, thank God yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know ain't got to fight it no more. Yeah. But touch, it looks good. Some people look really weird with a bald head. People think I'm going mad, but I am receding. No, I'm not having it. I actually am. So do you want to see my hairline? Do you see that? No, it's going nowhere, it mate. It used to be... Look, I'll pride myself on the fact that I can spot a potential bald mate, guy. I know it's going because I just know my hair. Yeah, but, I know where my hair mate, I was. By the time it's gone, it ain't going to matter. You're going to be old. You know what I mean? You hang yeah. on to that. What is it that fella said? You look like a fucking cartoon. He <laughs> said, I, well, no, everyone gave you in YouTube comments said I look like a Bond villain. A Bond villain? Yeah. yeah take that. And then uh, shout out all right fans. Um, he used to say, I look like a cartoon. A cartoon. <laughs> Like a head like action man. Yeah, a head like yeah. action man. Action man head is what he's called me. Yeah. And uh but there you go, mate. But listen, I've been doing comedy a while now. Yeah. Um I'm thirty two. And at times I've been thinking to myself, when am I gonna feel like I've made it, you know what I mean? And I think that that time come last Thursday. What happened, bruv? I went to the Rise of the Foot Soldier premiere. Rise of the Foot Soldier Six. A Rise of the Foot Soldier Six. It's a big film. It, it was a very big feel, very big occasion, yeah. very big day in my life. Where was it? Uh, Leicester Square Theatre. Oh, mate, yeah, that's proper. And I was rubbing shoulders with the likes of, I mean, some real top, top, top stars, you know, like Daniela Westbrook, a couple of yeah. people off a of goggle box. A-list. Um, Tama Hassan. Oh, yeah, Geezer. Yeah, just real, you know. Proper real, A-list. There's some real fucking top level people, yeah. mate, you know, so. <laughs> Did you get the full red carpet treatment? Well, what it was was, right, so we turned up and I took our mate Plum. Yeah, yeah. Because he's, like, he's a super fan. Mate, when I said to him, I said, look, I'm not really into it, but I've just been offered two tickets to the Rise of the Foot Soldier premiere. Do you want to go? He was like, oh, mate. <laughs> Do I want to fucking go? <laughs> yeah, mate. He felt, like, mate, he honestly thought he'd been invited to the fucking Oscars. Yeah. I mean, well, for him. For it is, that is the Oscars to him. Listen, it for a geezer no from that. Essex who's a plumber. Yeah. You know, who sounds like... Uh, the son of the OSB. Son of the OSB. Yeah. Probably... They don't get hired enough. Listen, that is his Oscars. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's his fucking Oscars, you know. So I took him. Anyway, we're in this queue for the red carpet. And they're like, we don't have to queue for the red carpet. I was like, to be honest, I don't think that's my sort of thing. Like, I'm not bothered about standing on there and getting a photo. I would have done it. I couldn't do it. Really? I couldn't do it. it I'm was surprised, just, Jamesy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, listen, if it was like, if it was like Wolf of Wall Street thing. Different vibe. I'm, I'm having it all day. But I just saw... So hang on, you had to queue to you get to, on the red carpet. So, right. So I took, we was in the queue for the red carpet. And then it goes, well, you can go through this entrance. I was like, all right, I'll just have a look. At, just see if our name's on the list. I was like, so there's a few different lists. First list, we're not on. Oh no. Second list we're not on. Oh no. Third list we're not on. 
And like you should have seen the worry in our faces. We were like, nah, we like we got proper suited and booted you should as well. Be, oh no, I saw that. Yeah. I had like so on the <laughs> Like I dressed up, man. Yeah. And then we were like, I could see the worry on the plum's face. He could see the worry on mine. And he goes, Oh no. Nah. We're gonna get fucking turned away, you can't. Yeah, that would be embarrassing. And I was just like, ah, oh, mate. And I was calling Ray, you know, I'm like, mate, like, they're saying I need a QR code. I ain't got a QR code, blah, blah. Anyway, they said, go to that queue. Go to the queue who's originally in for the red carpet. For the I first went, list? Yeah. Right. Went there, my picture's down, plus uh, one. And we brilliant. were like, oh, mate, we was just like, sigh of relief. Mate, I'm thinking, if you're on the fourth list, like, come on. But you was actually on the first we list. Was in, we was on the top list, mate. Yeah, yeah, come on. But, but this is it. He's like... We went to the toilet after and we both were thinking the same thing. We were like, if we got turned away, we would have just had to have said that we got in and watched it. Oh, yeah, of course. Because I couldn't have the embarrassment. He was all in by that point. All I could think, right, was his dad, the OSB, he would never have let me live that down. Nah. Could you imagine getting knocked on the rise of the foot soldier <laughs> premiere? <laughs> suited and booted. Suited and booted. Put it all over your story before you got there. Yeah, it would have been bad. Mate, I'd already put a story up like, guess where I'm off to? Yeah. Like, it would have been... Fucking embarrassing, man. And the, actually, I weren't worried about no one's opinion bar the USBs. The USB? The, the USB. What's a fucking USB? <laughs> it's a thing you plug in, mate. USB. Yeah. yeah. OSB. <laughs> <laughs> OSB. I was worried about it, what he was going to say. But we get in, mate, and it's so funny. So Rise of the Foot Soldier, for those of you that, that might not know, it's basically based off of, there was the first film was based off the Essex Boy Murders. Yeah. So really, and there's been a franchise now, we're on a sick film. It's a low budget British gangster film. Like the white man's top boy. It's the white man's top boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of um, the Shane and Sully, you got fucking Stephen Darren, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Brilliant. I, and I, I'll tell you, I always go, well, one thing I'll say, I enjoyed the film and it gave me, and, and I've said before on this podcast, because people might pull me up on it, I was talking to the palm and I, sometimes I see them films and I think, who the fuck watches them? Yeah. Turns out it's me. I go watch them. Yeah, but like you said, you have to look at it as if it's a comedy. Well, it, To see the funny bits. It is best watched off as a bit of a comedy yeah. because it is entertaining if, if you, you watch it. If you don't take like, it too seriously, you will enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I, mean, I won't spoil it for you. I mean, the director come up and he was like, please don't tell anyone the endings because I don't want to spoil surprises. Yeah. I'm thinking, funny enough, I don't think people are going to be yeah, asking I don't me. think people care. But it was good. No, they'd yeah. done a good job. And it gave me a, it gave me a, a, a it gave me a bit of a new fan respect actually for like low budget films. You can tell it's been done on a bit of a shoestring budget. Yeah. And they're trying to make it. At the end of the day, when you think film, you're comparing a gangster film to like Layer Cake, Snatch, they ain't got the money in them. Of course they ain't. And look, it still takes a lot. You still got to do the same amount of stuff. Just it's probably harder when you haven't got the budget and you can't just throw money at it. No, exactly. But if they were still put it together, fair play to them. Yeah. So it did make me think how much mileage are they going to get out of these Essex boy murders? Because really these Essex boys, what got killed in the 90s, they were just like standard. And it mad. Drug certain dealers. things just have like so much longevity. Yeah. And now like they're, they're, they've got this franchise where it's just like, take two days of blood and he goes, it going solo and like fucking ironing people out. Yeah. Like, are they going to be going back to like, they had an origins one. Like, are they going to be going back to like, Tony Tucker, the school dates, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and it's still the same geezer playing him, you know, and he's up 50 and he's like trying to play a 15 year old. Yeah, well, look, think about it. Fast and Furious, what they had, like 10 of them? Yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Once you've got to six, there's nothing really holding but you back. But actually, that makes it more fun, the fact that... Yeah. But it was fun. The reason I really wanted to go, because I just wanted to see the characters that were there. And it was so funny, mate. Who'd you bump into? Mate. I mean, I've got to be delicate about how I say this, but some quite notorious people, I would say, that uh, on the Essex narcotics scene were okay. there. Okay. It was funny. We got dressed up in all like the suit and that. And like, obviously, you can tell, you can tell the shotters look, you know. Yeah, yeah, man bag on. Mate. Or left a man bag this, at home. This is what gets me about people that obviously sell a bit of chop, right? They're not, they're not subtle about it. They've got no, like, of course not. they've got like a uniform. 
Yeah. Gavinci t-shirt. Yep. Man bag. Valentino's. Rolex. Roly. Driving about in a rangy. You can literally spot them. Mate, you just think to yourself, listen, I'm no uh, fucking Frankenstein or whatever, right? What do you but, mean? Like, I'm not clever, right? Frankenstein. What's his name? Einstein, <laughs> fuck's sake. Fucking hell, fuck. Right, but I'm no Einstein, right? But like, I'm, and I'm no, I'm no fucking Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, right? it don't take a lot to figure it out. I can spot a drug dealer a mile off. Yeah. They all wear that uniform. Yeah. Why? Just like that character that you play, it is, that's what they look like. They're not at work during the day. They just float around. They're at the gym. Night gear during the day, Under Armour. Yeah, yeah, gym clothes during gym the clothes. day. Man bag, kettle, free phones. It's not hard to spot, is it? But why are they not getting caught then? Look, the police ain't stupid. It says it in, it says it in layer cake. Only very, very stupid people think the police is stupid. You know what I mean? They know what they're doing. So if people are like so bait walking around like that, like Top Boy, fuck it, how obvious is it what they're doing? They've got to be snitching and being mm. left alone. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, who knows? That's my theory anyway. That's your theory. Well, listen, I don't think it's a bad theory. But it just makes, if I was doing that sort of thing, I'd be, sh I don't know, I'd like, I'd wear, go Primark or whatever. Yeah, I know a bloke who used to serve up and he done really well off it. He drove about in a golf with a suit. So it just looked like an estate agent. And he, this geezer was making moves, <laughs> big moves, right? And he was in a suit driving a golf. But all day? All day. That's the way to do it. To be fair, he's going work, so it... It looks, he looks like he's at work. To me, it looked like he was an estate agent. You know what I mean? Suited and booted in a golf. I respect that from a drug dealer if they're yeah, going to a bit, you know, it's a bit of service. Yeah. If they're turning up in a shirt and tire, yeah. I'm probably going to buy off him again. Of course you are. It's just like a respectable it's drug dealer. It's respectable. Deal. It yeah. makes you feel better about yourself. Of course it does. You know, you don't feel like such a scumbag. Saying that does it, maybe it makes you feel a little bit worse. Because like when you're picking up drugs, yeah, especially when you're doing it at like nine in the morning and you are fucked and the geezer shows up all prim and proper, it probably makes you feel worse <laughs> You think even he's going to work? Yeah, you'd rather pick it up off like a scumbag who's in a similar boat. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, 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 true. Maybe don't wear a suit. Yeah. But maybe, yeah. But it's just mad that they all dress, they all dress like that. But yeah, it's, you it's could a tell. Uniform. When I went to the premiere, I was just like, yep, you do, you're at it, you're at it, yeah. you're at it. You Plus, know. they've taken the time to go to Leicester Square to watch the Rise of the Foot Soldier 6 premiere. Yeah. Like, got to get up there, aren't we? Like, yeah. this is going to be the bollocks. It's like a biopic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's a, that's a nail on the head, man. Um, the old, uh, he's the white man's top boy. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. It's the white man's top boy, yeah. you know, it's our answer to top I mean, boy. look, I haven't seen it. Maybe I'll give it a go. Listen, give it a try. I, Plum was like to me, oh, do you know what? I was like, oh, she's kind of, why is it a foot soldier film? Do you do it? I was like, do you know what? After watching that film, yeah. I reckon it'd be quite funny. From what, a comedian's for you to have like a small part? Yeah, have a small part in it, yeah. yeah. Have a small part in it, why not? I reckon you could turn it on acting wise, mate. Mate, I, I, I can. At I can, least for a cameo. Yeah, do you reckon I could play a hard character? Maybe you could play one of them ones. Um, it's like a bit nutty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not necessarily are, but you could switch, you know what I mean? What, like, you ain't scared of like bad violence. What, like, as in, uh, like, what the geezers that go from like zero to 100? Like, you telling me that you ain't bought the package? No, 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 no. Let me ask you that again. Are you telling me? You ain't bought the package. <laughs> you fucking cut off! <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, yeah, that guy. But more though, I was thinking That's like quite the, good, that. like not bad. I'm thinking like the loopy one. You know the one who's got like the crazy eyes and we're like we'll just like switch and do weird stuff. <laughs> that geezer. That geezer. Like some sort of fucking. But you're mug. you're the trigger man. Do I look like sort of like some sort of fucking mug? You were like that? <laughs> that guy. This guy. That guy, yeah, the proper nutty one. Proper nutty So one. have you seen a new Top Boy? I've not, no. You at, ain't you? Oh, I've seen in all of it. I've seen, I'm still in character. Uncross your eyes, man. Sorry, you man <laughs> <laughs> the guy, the that's Irish guy, where head, he acts like a little bit loopy, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? The loopy one. The Irish fella, he looks a little bit like... Oh, him, yeah, he's you a could great play, actor. You could, hey, by the way, that guy, do you know he's like proper come through the care system, he's had like a real hard life. Really? Yeah, because he was in um, 
The Banshees of Inner Sherin. Yeah, Banshees Mate. of Inner Sherin. Great, great film. film. Great, great film. film. He was also in um, some sort of superhero film, The Avengers, maybe. Was he? Oh, he's in one of them ones I watched. Yeah, well, he's um, been in a few things, but very good actor. That guy, great actor. That's the sort of part I could see you playing. You know what I mean? A little bit like, what is this geezer going to do next? You know what I mean? Not, like the, tu- a little not bit the tough guy. Cl- like, okay, so he's like the leader. Yeah. But he's got, he's got a nutty side. Yeah. But he's a bit smart with but it. But that's why everyone follows him, because they're fucking frightened of what he might do. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, that's the sort of character. Well, I I've sort of got that reputation on the street. I feel anyway. like if I was going to play a character, I would be like the, the baddie. You'd, mm, I feel like you'd probably, I'd be the smart leader one. I could be, and I'd be like, like the enforcer. I'd be like, I'd be like white boy, go sort it out, and then yeah. you'd come up. You ain't even like, got to say it. You just look at me like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bald headed Russian. Yeah, yeah. I'll get, him, I'll get him for you. Probably wouldn't ever yeah. have a speaking part. Just like yeah, do a lot yeah, of grunting. Yeah. yeah, that could be me. Yeah. I mean, you, you used to have a bit of a reputation on the streets back in the day. Not really, mate. No? Nah? No, nah, not really. Nah, I, didn't I was game, but I weren't very good. Uh, look, I told you why. There, it kicked off once, yeah. I was with my pals, and uh, like my natural state was, when it kicked off, was like, freeze. Yeah. Not want to get involved, right? And it all kicked off. My pal got jumped by these geezers. One of my pals jumped in, and I didn't do anything. Right? Ooh, and the yeah. shame... Shame, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guilt that I felt around that stuff. Yeah. It was like, next time it kicked off, I didn't want to get involved. No. Nah. But I thought the thought of being knocked out was better mm. than feeling what I felt last time. So I just jumped in. And then after a few fights, it was like the boys was like, mate, we know your game, <laughs> yeah? Maybe just like, hold the watches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, don't worry, we, we know you're up for it. Just like, you ain't got to get involved, mate. You know what I mean? Mate, getting knocked out, it must be the worst thing of being like, like one minute, you're like, fucking come on in. Yeah. And then you're just like, oh, I'm in a fucking hospital. Yeah. Do you well, know look, what I mean? that ain't that happened for me. Did I tell you the story? I might have even mentioned it on the pod when I got knocked out by that Turkish geezer in a lead shirt. Uh, oh. <laughs> when we was in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, Turkish bouncer, lead um, yeah, shirt in yeah. Belgium. Like, what a fuck, what a fuck up. And uh, I, I was like standing there ready to have it. Next thing I knew, I was standing there ready to have it again. And everyone's like, are you all right, mate? And I'm like, yeah, "Yeah, come on, let's fucking do them. Like, (laughs) we were children, you know? And uh, they was like, mate, you just got knocked out. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I was like, mate, he whacked you. You got knocked out and you jumped straight back up, like ready to have it. Oh, wow. My cousin told me, he's a boxer. He was like, it's called a flash knockdown. You don't understand. You don't know what happened. It was so quick. But like, yeah, I had a sore, sore mouth. You don't just look like Tyson Fury. You also fight like him. Yeah, yeah, like when he get knocked out. Wilder, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. happened to me. Bit of yeah. a different situation, but yeah. But this film, man, like, um, it's entertaining to watch. Like, if you're looking for people messaging me, like, should I go watch it in the cinemas? I was like, I don't think it's that sort of film. With all due respect, no, it's a Netflix. Fight. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, ne- it's a Netflix. Sit at home, you know, want just a bit of a f- fun thing to watch. Yeah, you know, and there are funny lines in there. You know, like he. Like he knocked uh, one of the geezers, knocked some geezer out. He goes, you can't do that, that's the head dorm. And he goes, well, when he wakes up, tell him he's a mug. You know what I mean? It was like, the things like that. Yeah, but there's a lo- it is comedic. There's a lot of, see you next Tuesdays. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, the, you can tell the people been writing it and then they're thinking, what can we put on the end of this sentence to jazz it up a bit? What about cunt? Yeah, great. That yeah, we'll stick that one in there. Oh, by the way, that made me laugh. There was a clip the other day of this podcast and it was like, you bleeped out, I said, like, fuck, you bleep <laughs> that out. And then I'm like, cunt, and you left it in. Yeah, well, I did, but yeah, with it, listen. <laughs> I like that, boys. I appreciate it's it. A great, uh, it's, a great, um, it's a great word. But, it's a great um, word. And look, I've got a theory about that word. It only works in our accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't be like, it don't say, when Americans sound the same. When an American says it, it sounds terrible. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Great Britain. Because when the Scottish say it, it sounds great. When the Irish say it, it sounds great. You yeah, I, I mean? go as far as saying actually, when Americans say it, it's like cultural appropriation. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not that it just thing, doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't. It's work. like seeing a white guy with dreadlocks. Just don't do it, man. Nah, me neither. Nah. Um, but do you know what? One thing I was looking around at these people uh, at this premiere, and I'm thinking, I reckon a lot of you, judging by the clientele, a lot of you are going to have to return your XL bullies. In a few Definitely, months. Definitely, mate. There's a lot of XL mate, bully owners there. what's your thoughts about there. this? Listen, mate. At the end of the day, when it comes to XL bullies, right? 
I don't know why you'd want one. If I had a dog, I want a dog when I come through the door to be like, welcome home, Dad. You are right? I know you've had a tough day. But it's all right. We're going to get it through together. We're going to watch a film. Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. That's the sort of dog I want. I don't want to get through the door to an XL bully and just be like, we fucking looking at you, cunt. Yeah, no, but I don't think Where's it is. Where's my food? I don't think it is. I saw it, yeah, and I completely agree. It's like you can't con- condemn a whole breed for a couple of dogs that, like, at the end of the day, it comes down to the owner. A dog's just a dog. They're not inherently bad or good. It's the way you train them, the love they've received. It's the owner's problem, not the breed. I, I think the biggest probably problem with the XL bullies is that a lot of people that seem to sell them also sell drugs. Of course they do. And I reckon that's probably, thing. you know, that's probably why they are, at the end of the day, they're just like mimicking their owners, you know what yeah. I mean? Getting a little bit If spiteful. there were some middle class people started selling XL bullies, they probably ain't going to be so rowdy. Yeah, and I mean, look. <sighs> but it's always a geezer that probably has come out of prison. Yeah. And he's like, right, what can I do that's legal now, which also still keep a bit of street cred? Um, XL bullies. Breeder. Breeder, dog yeah. breeder. But no, but they're not, they're, not, they're not breeding like cockapoos, you know what I mean? Oh, no, of course not. It's not a cavapoo they're farm. They're never like, oh, I'm a dog breeder. Yeah, what, do you, what, 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 what sort of thing do you breed? Um, chihuahuas, you know, yeah, it's yeah, never yeah. that. There's no credibility in that. No, there's no. They still want to keep the rep. And the XL bullies is like that, isn't it, really? So, oh, I'm sweating bullets here. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, probably the, it's probably the hoodie, mate. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a cold day, but... It's not. Nah, he's a bit cold. But, um, yeah. But a lot of XL bully owners, but they're saying they're going to ban them. Yeah, look, and that, they probably will. How about these again? Well, didn't, didn't the geezer, oh, are they? I don't what, know what vapes? I'm going to do. Disposable vapes are going to be banned. Really? I don't know what I'm going to do. I ain't going back on cigarettes. You're going to have one to of get them one big of them. fucking Game Boy vapes. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> 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 they look like a fucking Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gelly's got one over there. Gelly's got one. He loves Gelly's it. Gelly's like the ori- <laughs> he's the original Game Boy vapor, <laughs> mate. The things you get out there, it's like literally when they fucking you have a Game Boy vape. Honestly, you think you're fucking walking past a dragon. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you're either a dragon, so a dragon or a magician. Or when One someone's having it out of the car and you're like, fucking hell, is that car on fire? But it's just <laughs> someone having a blast. Yeah, but they're big old things like that. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. It is so much. Uh, but you might have to get one of those. I probably will. Look, I can't go back on the cigarettes. And I can't. I do like a cigar, but that's not like an all-day, like a daytime thing, is it? Oh, they're getting rid of disposable vapes. Yeah, and look, I understand. Fuck me, all the kids are on them. Like, there's little kids that never smoked, ever. And they're just, like, bang addicted to the vape. My little cousin comes home, like, coughing after a night out. And they're like, he's, like, just about to turn 18. He's proper on the festival scene. It's funny to watch. Mate. Really? Like, yeah, because yeah. I remember them days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, yeah. They were good times. Yeah. But yeah, they're all on the vapes, all of them. Never smoked a cigarette in their life. I well, think, they're, I think they're personally aimed at kids. Do you think? Well, they're fruity. Well, they're colourful. Colourful, fruity. You know Either I mean? kids or like blokes with low IQs like, like us. Yeah, I mean, Cause I honestly, to be seen. Honestly, I think like, I stopped smoking one for about a week and I'm walking like, I'm thinking, right, I'm off them now. And I see him behind the counter, I'm like, whoa, what's that? It's a bright colour. Yeah, and it's what it does. Yeah, yeah. You know it's like a I mean? fruit machine. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, flashing lights. Yeah, flashing lights. Especially if you've had a blast, mate. I used to sit in front of them things for hours. What, fruities? Yeah. Really? Not because it, it was just like something to do. You know what I mean? That's why I love Candy Crush. Mate, when I was bad on the gear, I used to just sit there and just play Candy Crush mate, for like hours got, on end. I've got a family friend who is he's just the best guy, right? Like, just a ball of joy. Just love, like, love him to bits. Um, he's autistic, right? Yeah. He is fucking mustard on a fruit machine. Yeah, I bet he is. Can see the pattern, the algorithm. <laughs> Mate, it's like, he'll just go bang, bang, bang. I remember going to Centre Parks once with him. He'd come out of there with like 300 quid. I'm like, how do you... you how know? old? Uh, I think he's up like mid-30s now. Nice. But he's just great on a fruity, mate. I've never really been a gambler though, man. To no, me neither. Me neither. Not I've, for me. I've never been... It's never been an issue for me, but that, 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 mate, I can imagine that's a killer. Because you know what, when, you, when you're a drinker or you take substances or whatever, and if you've got a problem, it, it's pretty recognisable, I think, to a certain extent. Yeah. Whereas gambling is something where, like... Easy to hide. 
but um, yeah, easy to hide because the only thing that has been affected is your well, your bank balance, bank balance, and your mental health. Yeah, of course, which is it is. You know what it is with the gamblers. Yeah, they're actually addicted to losing. We, oh, you said yeah. this to me before. They're addicted to losing. It's fucked up. Do you think though? Apparently, that's what it is. Really? My sponsor, like, obviously, he's had problems with drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, but he's a bad gambler as well. Not anymore. You know what I mean? I think he's got, like, 14 years clean and, like, five years off the gambling. But, um, yeah, he said it proper got hold of him. Really? really got hold of him. It's a bad one. See, I just, it's just never done it for me. What no, I like to do, the only time I do like to have a gamble, if I go, like, run for dogs. Yeah, but look, there's having a bet and then there's being, like, a gambler. Yeah. So like when we play golf, we'll have a tenner on it. So that makes it more interesting. Yeah. You have like, you back your game, you have a little, it makes it more interesting. I do like doing that, but I don't get out of hand with it. I remember seeing my mate once when we was younger, we were about 17 and he'd started work when he was about 16. And I remember going into a, um, a bookies in all church. He's like, oh, let me just pop in here a sec. Yeah. And he'd done a grand in about 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, mate, it's dangerous. And, I, and ever since I see that, I'm just like, Nah, do you know what? That ain't for me. Nah. I knew people who'd literally get their wages on a Friday and they'll just feed it into that roulette machine. In the roulette machine. Score, and I'm, score, and I'm score, thinking score. to myself, like, surely that machine is set up to, like, so that you're going to lose. You of know what I mean? Of course it is, mate. Look, it's, the odds are always stacked against you. Yeah. Always. You might have a win. You might get in there, get lucky. But what they do is they win and they put it all back in. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's madness, mate. That's actually Hornchurch, right? I reckon per capita probably produce the most drug dealers in Essex. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. And they're all living in Brentwood now. Uh, Brie or Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> Brentwood till it comes on top and they go on the run and end up in Dubai. And then, yeah. they're in, then they're in Dubai, mate, yeah. You get away with it over there. They don't, they don't send you back, do they? Uh, apparently so, mate, yeah. Non, Non-extradition, is that the word? Non-extradition. Yeah. That's why they all end so up I've over got there. some big words, bruv. Have you been to Dubai before? Yes, I have a couple of times. Have you? Lovely gaff. Do you like it? Um, Trumpy though. You've yeah. got to take some money with you over there, mate. And look, it's all a little bit too... You've got to have all the bits, you know what I mean, to go there. Uh, for me, if I'm on holiday, I don't want to have to be fucking watching what I'm doing. I just want to like let it all hang out and just enjoy myself yeah. and relax. I feel like... It's a bit like you got to keep up with the Joneses when you're in Dubai. Yeah, that ain't a bit me. Do you know what? Dubai has never appealed to me for that reason. It's good. It is good. Yeah, it is. But knowing me, like, I don't think I'm a Dubai person. Maybe, maybe not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Look. And I think if I, I, if I was to do a big holiday, like expensive one, like Dubai is, I'd rather go America. I'd rather go to Florida. I'd rather go um, to, you know, Disney World and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with that. That's more me, it's more fun. For me, it's like, I'll, on holiday, I just want to sit on a sun lounger and read my book and just eat food. That's yeah, all I want to do. I totally agree with that. I'm not like a, oh, come on, let's get up and go and do stuff type of guy on holiday. Nah. I'm a sit down. Mate, we'd get along sit down well on holiday. Yeah. Well, we do, don't we? Yeah, yeah, I'm, probably I'm, apart from I'll be eating a bit more adventurously, but. I'm sunbathing and I'm um, reading. Yeah, yeah, me too. I went for a Chinese after the rise of the foot soldier. Yeah, mate, my pa- the plum sent me the photo of your plate. Boys, this is so funny, right? So he's ordered like this Chinese dish. What was it? Chicken balls. Chicken balls. All the chicken balls are gone and it was on like a bed of like vegetables. I don't and know it was, what they were. It's funny. All the sauce and vegetables are still there and the chicken balls are gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, mate. Standard, mate. What yeah. about your mate who ordered the uh, egg fried rice? No, no, no. It weren't my mate. So this is funny. So I'm in the Chinese the other day. Shout out Wong's in Collier Row, mate, higher grade. I know like Big John. Listen, raves Chinese. About, raves about the Blue Orchid. He's got to try Wong's, yeah, it is tasty. He, listen, he won't, he won't. I know, he, I know he won't, but look, maybe that's a little bit of a higher end vibe. This is like more day to day. If you want a Chinese takeaway, Wong's on Collier Row Lane, powerful. So I've gone to pick up my Chinese. Yeah. I'm standing there waiting to pay and um, the bloke's taking an order on the phone. So he's like, oh yeah, crispy, crispy chili beef. And he goes, egg fried rice, no egg. And I was like, mate, that just proper reminded me of you. Like, That's just how rice, you have an egg, fri- egg fried rice with no egg? I have special fried just, rice. Just rice. Really? Spe- special fried rice, yeah. That's Tom, adventurous for you. The plum was, uh, he was like, I'm surprised at that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have the uh, special fried rice. I have the duck. Yeah. I have the chicken balls. I love barbecue ribs. I feel like Chinese is good for you because it's sweet. 
And you got a bit I of a sweet it, tooth. Mate. I love it. Yeah, I love a Chinese. But the as thing well. is, with if you get a wrong Chinese, they can be greasy and horrible. Yeah, but I quite like the greasy, horrible ones as well. Mate, there's a Chinese near me. To be honest, I've moved on now. I go to Wong's. This other gaff, I think he's got like a two star hygiene rating. It's like a proper Kazi. What, the one but in Collier still, Road? No, no, no. The old one that I used to go to. No, Wong's is, Wong's is bang on, five stars. Yeah. This old gaff, mate, it was just like familiar to me. I liked it. And I used to go there, even though I knew like the front of house was bad. Like, can you imagine what the kitchen looks like? Mate, two star hygiene rating. Two star rating. hygiene rating. They're probably fucking... I don't see how they're still running. Surely they're getting shut down. Mate, two star. They're probably like... But I still used to eat out of there. I loved it. So this XL bully, did he... He killed a guy, didn't he? I don't know. I saw a couple of things where it was like bad attacks. I saw one on like a petrol forecourt and this dog was going mad and like biting this guy. But like I said to you, the dog has probably been provoked to the point where it's aggressive. The dog doesn't need to be aggressive. You know what I mean? If an owner shows it love and trains it, gives it a bit of discipline in this life, it ain't going to be running around biting people. It's the yeah. owner's problem, not the dog. That's, that's my standpoint on it. Yeah, but how do you stop? You can't say to people, well, you can't have XL bullies. Of course you can't. Just because you've got a skin fade. No, it's the, it's the owner's responsibility to make sure the dog is trained. Yeah. Simple but no, yeah, I'll probably agree with that. People need to start vetting. Like, you should have to go into the dog office or whatever it is. I don't know yeah. what it is. But go in there. You know what I mean? You've got a skin fade. You've got a roly. You've got a sleeve tattoo. No XL bullies Where for you. Where it says only God can judge me. <laughs> no XL bullies for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we don't trust look, you. Look, on this same, look at it this way. You get like some yappy little Jack Russell or a Yorkshire Terrier. Mate, they're just as aggressive. They yeah, but just haven't got hinge. the ability to kill. You know what I mean? That's why no one's on them. Yappy yeah, yeah, dog yeah, but, but, coming but at you and they exactly pull them back on the lead. It's that's the exactly same it. behavior, but, but they can't kill exactly you. But that's exactly it. Uh, Jack Russell ain't going to kill you. Of course it's not. It's like... You could use that argument and be like, listen, like that lion is sweet. Like, <laughs> like if, you're, if you're nice with it, at yeah. the end of the day, a lion is still going to fucking iron you out. Yeah, but it's a little bit different with a lion. But it's not, but XL bullies <laughs> ain't that far off, are they? They are a little bit. I mean, I suppose you could compare it to like a hyena. You know what I mean? You've got a well-trained hyena. Same thing, still a dog. But at the end of the day, if an XL bully can kill you, then should that be... Should you have that in your house? An Alsatian could kill you. What's that, a German Shepherd? Yeah. Can they? Mate, a police dog will fuck you up. Do you reckon? 100%. What, I a reckon, German look, Shepherd? If you had a tear up between My an XL bully and a German, German Shepherd, Shepherd, mate, that could be close. They're a savage dog. Or like one of them other ones, what's it called? A Rock Belgian Wilder. Malinois. They are savage dogs. What's that one? It's like an Alsatian, a Belgian Malinois, I think it's called. Rottweilers are pretty naughty. Have you ever seen them dogs that like ju climb up the fence to like grab things? They're like, can, they can do mad stuff, these dogs. It's like a type of Alsatian. Really? Mate, dog's a dog. A big dog will still fuck you up. But this is, this is the thing is, should they, sh yeah, should like, if it can fuck you up that bad, should that be a Should people have them as pets? Yeah. Well, this is the debate. I think if people have already, what, so they're saying if you've got one of these dogs, that's it, they're taking it off you. I don't think that's fair. Maybe make it, if it's a problem, because I don't know the ins and outs of it. And if it's it, a problem, don't breed anymore. Make it illegal to have a new one. But you can't take people's dogs off them. An XL bully, I don't know much about uh, dogs. Is there like, is there such thing as a bully? I don't really know, mate. Like, do you get XL bully, bully, and then like a medium bully, and then a small bully? Like small, medium, and large. This is it. Why is it called an XL bully? Because it's really big. Well, this is it. That's what I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of it, mate. But you got like a French bulldog. It just doesn't sound... Whoever's named that dog as well. It's, just it's, a la it. it's lazy. It's just done it no favours. Yeah, though. no, it's lazy. Really lazy. XL bully. Yeah. It might as well just called it... Fucking massive, horrible Big fucker. hench bully, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big things. Yeah. So, but there you go. I don't think, um, I don't think I'll be buying an XL bully anytime soon. No, I won't so. either, mate. But well, no, you won't be able to. will be interesting to see what happens when it pans out. What's your thoughts on hummus? Never tried it. I think you'd like it. What is hummus? It's like the dip. It's a dip, yeah. No. Let's leave it there. No, I don't, no.
Really? I've seen it before. It's like a, it's like a uh, creamy. You've seen hummus before. I've seen hummus you? before. It's like yeah. a creamy thing. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's not. I think you like it. Nah. Really? I can tell it's not a bit of me. So, yeah, not for me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's delicious. Yeah, is it delicious? I'm actually starving now. Yeah, mate. We can get a bit of pie and mash manzies after. Okay, mate. Yeah, I'll back that. Yeah, lovely. Nice. But I think that's the end of another episode. So, um, thanks so much for listening again, guys. Listen, if you're not already, if you're listening to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, the real fun is to be had here over on the YouTube channel. Uh, go to at we are l 17 subscribe to the channel all our episodes now are filmed back to front this is the place to come and watch it you know what i mean you yeah, get it definitely. on youtube get it up on the telly um and yeah come come watch us over there uh but listen if you are listening on spotify and apple podcasts as we say every week give us an honest uh review of what you think the podcast is we think we give you a five-star service but we'll let you decide um and um thanks again to my co-host uh, chrissy white aka white boy runfers number one podcaster See you all next week. See you later.